Hey guys, today I have a very magical Disney-esque effect to share with you. Check out this sparkle reveal. I guess that's what I'm calling it. I'm going to show you how to make this in Apple Motion today. Let's just dive right into it, okay? So here we are in Apple Motion. The first thing I'm going to do is drop in this can of Monster Energy. Fun fact, I've never in my life had a Monster Energy drink, but this can is the perfect shape for this effect and also I really like their branding, I have to say. And so the first step in this process is to head on over to the center of our screen and select the B spline tool. And I'm gonna get this little pen cursor here. And in my canvas, I'm just gonna click away this zigzag pattern and make sure that I'm going back and forth on either side of my can. Okay, and now what you can see here is because the B spline has a very smooth interpolation, we're gonna play with these keyframes and stretch them out further and further and make sure that the bend of my squiggle line is outside the can at all times. So it almost looks like it has a spiral shape, which is kind of the idea. All right, now to set this B spline into place, just click anything in your project pane and there is our B spline. So now let's head on over to the inspector and we've got this outline here checked. We wanna dial down the width so it just looks a little skinnier. That looks good to me. There's one quick adjustment I wanna make here. I'm gonna click on over to edit points, bring this guy over a little more. Now what we need to do is have this squiggle line, our B spline line, right on. So I'm going to go over to the top center of my screen, hit behaviors. We're going to go to shape and hit the right on feature. And now down here in my timeline, you see this purple bar and you see here that my line is actually writing itself on. Okay. So obviously though, the effect we're trying to achieve is for the sparkles to rotate around the can, right? And in Apple motion, you cannot make line points on a Z axis. Everything has to be on the X or Y axis. You cannot make it 3D. I'm hoping that's a feature that they add at some point, but right now you can't do it. So we need to make it look like this line is going um, around the can. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out pieces of the can and mask them off and layer them over the B spline. So what we need to do first is to head on over to our project pane, highlight our can, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to bring it up to the top of my project here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle mask using my mask tool down here in the center of the screen. And I'm just gonna draw in this rectangle. And so you can see already sort of what we've got going on. We have, I'm gonna turn off my bottom can. So now we just can see revealed the top piece of this can. It's perfectly rectangular right now. I wanna change that a little bit. Let's head on over to the inspector window. So we're selected on our mask and we're gonna convert it to points. And yes, we do wanna convert it to points. And now I can take the corners of my rectangle and skew them a little bit. So I can get more of the effect that I want. And now the other thing I'm going to do is in the inspector window, let's dial up the feathering on that. Now we're gonna to need to duplicate that cutout can that we just created and move around the mask all the way down the length of our can. So I'm going to go back to the one I just cut that has the draw mask on it. I'm gonna right click, hit duplicate. And then to see the mask in my inspector, I'm gonna click on it down here in my timeline and I'm going to move the mask down to cover our second line. So basically what I'm covering in is, if you look at the B spline, every time the line slopes down from right to left, these angles, those are the ones I'm going to be covering. And just so on and so forth, we're gonna keep duplicating and moving that mask. Hey guys, this seems like a great time to remind you that if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload. All right, we're getting somewhere. Let me just show you what we have so far. Yes, but how do we turn that B spline into sparkles? So easy, let me just show you how. We're gonna go up to our library and we're gonna hit particle emitters. 
and we're gonna go to sparkles here and we're gonna grab the magic wand and I'm going to drag this into my project pane above my original can but below all the cutouts we just did. So let's just drop it right here. So now we're gonna select it in our project pane. We're gonna head up to the top center of the screen, go to behaviors, basic motion, and we're gonna select motion path. So here we are in the inspector window under behaviors. Here's our motion path. We're gonna change the path shape from open spline to geometry. And then you get this little drop zone thing here. And we're going to drag our B spline into that box and now our sparkle is going in the motion path of that line now we don't want to see that line anymore so i'm just going to uncheck it here in my project pane to conceal it and there's our sparkle effect but i don't think these sparkles are nearly big enough or anything so let's go over to the magic wand again in our project pane let's click on over to emitter in our inspector window and let's change a whole bunch of stuff here so I'm gonna dial up the scale. I'm gonna dial up the birth rate to give us more sparkles. All right, this is looking pretty cool, but I do wanna make some adjustments here to our magic wand. So let's go to the project pane and under the magic wand, we can actually drop down and change some things about the way that this magic wand effect looks. First of all, this diamond that's sort of leading the way do you see these diamonds here? I'm not crazy about them. So I can get rid of those by unchecking this box here, flare one. Now they're gone. So now we just really have the sparkles, which is what I want. Let's select the sparkles in our project pane and make some changes here. First, I wanna change this color. So we've got this color gradient bar here. We can change the color of our sparkles by first selecting this little yellow box. And then let's grab this eyedropper and I'm going to color pick from my canvas from the monster logo. So we have more of this like green gradient going, kind of a yellow to green effect. See that? See how the front of the sparkle trail is yellow and the back is green. Let's change the scale randomness next. So they're not all so uniform in size. And I would also recommend changing the angle randomness to kind of give them a little more separation. Now the other thing I'm noticing is that I feel like this motion is happening kind of slowly. Let's go down to our timeline, find the magic wand in our timeline, hit this drop down. There's the motion path we created. We can speed this action up a little bit by bringing that purple bar back so it's a little shorter. Okay, that looks pretty good. The last step we need to do is add the mask to the can so it reveals from top to bottom. We're gonna start with our group, which is full of the pieces of the can that we masked out a little while ago. So I'm gonna select my group of pieces of can here. And there's an important step we need to take. If your group has this icon next to it, you actually need to select that icon and change it to this shape. This lets us apply a mask to the group. Otherwise you would not be able to do it. So now that we've done that step, I'm going to select the rectangle mask in the center of the screen. And I'm going to draw a rectangle above my canvas and I'm going to hit convert to points. And now I've got all of my control points here with the option to keyframe, which is what we want. I'm going to add a keyframe at the very beginning of my timeline. And I'm going to scrub my playhead down in my timeline to about, I don't know, let's say here. I'm going to add another keyframe on my control points. And now what I want to do is draw my attention to the shape of my rectangle mask above my canvas. I'm going to select this control point on the bottom left corner, hold down my shift key and select this one here on the bottom right corner. And I'm going to drag both of these down so that the mask is changing shape over the course of my animation. And we're gonna have to play a little bit with the timing on this to make sure that the sparkles and the mask are all happening at the right time. What I'm gonna do is turn off my bottom can in my canvas so I can just see what's going on with this masked version because this is the trickier of the two versions of the can that we're working with. I'm going to head on over to my inspector window. I'm gonna feather this mask a little bit, gives us a little flexibility. And now I'm gonna watch really closely 
while I scrub my playhead. I'm gonna add some more keyframes here to make sure that we're timing perfectly. And our next step is just to copy that mask we just created to our original can. So I'm gonna go down into our timeline, select the rectangle mask, copy, turn on that can in our project pane that we just turned off and paste that mask. And the last thing we need to resolve is how this little sparkle is gonna end. I can make changes to the path of this sparkle effect by going back to our original B spline, remember our B spline, I'm gonna turn it back on and I'm going to right click on the canvas and select the edit points tool. And this last point, I'm just gonna drag down below my canvas. All right, guys, that is our final look. If you thought this was fun and you liked it, let me know by giving me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you never miss another one of my uploads, and I will see you again.